Though it's been a while since we've talked about a shitty shark movie for the blockbuster show, and uh, well, I went down a list of some of the worst shark movies out there, and uh, thankfully this was no Shark Exorcist, I just want to get that out of the way, but it's still a pretty bad one. We're talking about the 2005 TV movie Shark Man, also known as Hammerhead. Dr. King left out some of the key components of the formula, but if this is what I think it is, then King may have very well solved the stem cell riddle, and the possibilities are limitless. We leave tomorrow. Did you know sharks never succumb to disease? Created the perfect organism. God, King, you've lost it. This meeting is over. You can't just keep us here! I want to add, uh, on the DVD here, uh, let's see, it has a thing for previews, and um, this is one of those old school DVDs where for some reason they felt the need to advertise, uh, like, the, the, the format was a thing, and they also put, like, subtitles as if that's a selling point on the back of the box. It's the newest reason to stay out of the water. When a brilliant but misguided scientist is banished to a remote island, his stem cell research and DNA manipulation gives birth to horrifying results. By combining the most vicious killer of the ocean with the intelligence of man, he hopes to create a super killer whose domain is land and sea. Now, only a small group of scientists can stop his evil plans as one of his hammerhead men creations hunts them down one by one and there's no place to hide. I just want to add this description on the back sucks because first of all the font is incredibly small to read and impossible to make out half the time and it also doesn't help there's lots of grammar errors there's like no periods on certain sentences there's no commas so yeah like I said this is a movie that was aired on TV 2005 uh, it was probably aired a lot on the Sci-Fi Channel. It definitely seems like the kind of movie that they would play on there. You know, before they just started airing non-stop reruns of stuff like Harry Potter. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, at least it's a better movie choice than airing non-stop bullshit from the Asylum. This movie was sold to me as being a mixture of Jaws, Friday the 13th, and The Island of Dr. Moreau. In a way, that's fairly accurate. I mean, you got the whole genetic crossbreeding uh, man with animals type thing. A movie that came out like four years after this one did, but actually did a solid job of it, was uh, that movie uh, Splice. I don't know if a lot of people have seen that movie, but yeah, Splice was actually pretty decent. Jaws, of course, because every single shitty movie that involves sharks has to be tied to an actually good movie about sharks with Jaws. And also a little bit of Friday the 13th and the fact that uh, the killer stalks his prey in the woods. That that's That's also a key part of it. But as for the plot itself, let's get into it. The plot is about this evil scientist who looks like Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's, down to his haircut, his mustache, and even his glasses. Uh, and his, I guess it was supposed to be like a hunchback assistant, but uh, his henchman assistant scientist guy just looked like Rob Reiner in a lab coat. Now, his big plan, he disguises it as uh, a study for stem cell research, and he also says that it's a way to cure cancer, uh, because he says that he had a son who died of cancer. <laughs> I don't have your check by the close of business today. I'm going to Lehman Brothers because I know they're in it to win it, pal. <laughs> well, that, well, that aged well. Then cut over to this business building where we have a bunch of people who work in like a pharmaceutical company. And uh, we get uh, the main girl and uh, her fiance or her boyfriend and like a couple of their friends and her boss. Uh, and they get the invitation to come to this guy's private island. And they, they have a totally throwaway line about, uh, oh yeah, you and this guy have had a, some kind of checkered past, right? And uh, she then goes into this uh, explanation that apparently she went out with this guy's son, and his son eventually died of cancer. And uh, as we soon see, no, he actually didn't die of cancer. That was just a cover-up. Uh, he took his dying son and genetically crossbred him with a hammerhead shark. And at first I'm thinking, okay, so are they trying to say that that's what stem cell research is by genetically crossbreeding humans with animals, but then eventually he just comes out and says that he wants to genetically alter the human race so that it'll be nothing but half men, half shark. And maybe it's just because I watch a lot of Seinfeld, but it just reminded me of the, the Seinfeld episode with the pigmen. 
I just, I just immediately imagine Kramer busting into this place, trying to kidnap the shark man to reveal that there is in fact a military base somewhere trying to do experiments to create a uh, militant uh, race of nothing but evil mutant shark men. There was a half man, half pig in that room over there. Now, where is he? Where is he? Half what? You know what I mean. Pork, sausage, other thing, other thing. That's all, folks. You get where this is going. Once he reveals that that was why he invited them and not for some kind of big scientific revolutionary breakthrough like he uh, originally told them to get them to come out there in the first place, uh, he puts them in this cell and starts to fill the room up with water. And, uh, of course, he threatens to have them eaten by uh, the hammerhead guy. And ultimately, they find a way out because they they find a harpoon gun that's in there. And they shoot out a fan that's on the wall, so then they crawl through the wall. They, uh, you know, use all their shirts to try and traverse down the wall to try and find a way of getting off the island. But very early on, they established that even with their giant Nokia brick-style phones with giant antennas, there's no way to call anybody off the island. On top of that, all the boats are surrounded by shark-infested water, and it seems like the only way to get off this island is to get on one of the helicopters. If these people were smart and knew their shitty shark movies, they would know that there are actually a handful of those shitty shark movies where sharks are actually able to jump out of the water and cling on to their, uh, their helicopter and bring them down. Hell, even the Adam West Batman movie had something like that. <laughs> yeah, so like I said, uh, Sharkman then pursues them as they try to make their way through the woods, and slowly one by one he picks them off, and that's kind of vaguely connected to, like, movies like, um... I was thinking Friday the 13th, but also kind of reminded me of Evil Dead. There's a lot of spots where there's lots of, like, POV shots and the camera's, like, shaking. Uh, and that's also because this movie has horrible editing all throughout. Oh god, please tell me not every kill in the movie is going to be edited like that. It's not just a stylistic thing when it's like, oh, it's a POV shot, you know, you gotta have like some running sh fast shit and, you know, it's on par with like Uwe Boll trying to do that kind of thing in movies like Alone in the Dark. No, it's not even like that. And to be fair, this is something I've noticed with not just a lot of shitty shark movies, but just shitty horror movies in general. If they're not really good at staging, like, a really tense fight or death scene, what they'll do is they'll just have the camera zoomed up really close on uh, the actors, and then they'll shake the camera furiously, and then they'll just try and speed up the footage a little bit, put a lot of tense music, and lots of fast cuts with shots that go on for like half a second, and then BAM! They, they try to pass it off as the death scene, and it's just like, it's disorienting. It's really frustrating to sit through, because it's like, it's so horribly edited, you're like, what the hell just happened? Oh yeah, okay. Just really up close shots, quick cuts, and bam. It's too late. Let's go. Let's go. Slowly, one by one, one of their friends ends up getting attacked in the water until uh, main girl's fiance slash boyfriend slash whatever goes in and saves him. Um, the, the boss guy who they establish is kind of a dick, but then eventually he kind of redeems himself near the end. Like, he, he becomes a little bit more likable after they finally yell at him, I, I guess. Um, his girl, his comedically younger, dumb blonde girlfriend ends up getting it. Oh. Oh, God. Okay, yep. Yeah. All the death scenes are apparently edited like that. Where's Julie? <laughs> it was horrible. Choosing her life. <laughs> Can you sound less enthused about a woman you love just dying? This other woman that tagged along with them ends up getting it because she ends up getting poison ivy on her leg and then she sticks her leg into some water and of course, Hammerhead Man gets her. I'm getting really pissed off with the way these death scenes are edited, man. They're, they're, like Lots of close-up shots, lots of cameras shaking around a lot, and shots that go on for like less than half a second. I'm sick of it now. There's this one scientist lady who starts off as a villain, and then she uh, joins the good guys and says that, oh, evil Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's and his assistant Rob Reiner are, um, they're up to no good. You know, they told me that this was to help try and find a cure for cancer, but it, that's not what happened. Bernie has, like, this 
little militant group of like security all over his island and he like sends them out to try and capture these people and then either they get picked off by the hammerhead or they end up managing to escape because they end up shooting the, these guards also killed off uh, evil rob reiner because evil rob reiner was trying to lure the shark in uh and one of the many confusing things about this movie there's scenes on the dvd where in the subtitles a character will say bastard in the movie but the subtitles say Idiot. Hungry little bastard. Huh? Wait. Hungry? Huh? You said bastard, not idiot. Hungry little bastard. <laughs> Why does it say Hungry? idiot in the subtitles and not bastard? What are you gonna do with me, you sick bastard? Again with them saying bastard, but the subtitles say idiot. <laughs> it's like the guy who wrote the subtitles for this took a stand and was like, No, I am not putting no-no words on the screen with the subtitles. Going back to Uwe Boll, there's a scene where um, they break into the laboratory and they see like what this guy is up to. And it really reminded me of that scene in House of the Dead where all the heroes come across like, you know, the genetic crossbreeding that made the zombies come back. I was just waiting for someone to like a complete dumbass, shoot a tank full of water and have it spew out all over the floor, just like in that movie. It was stupid there, and if they did it here, it would be just as stupid. There's a part where they actually get to a helicopter, but uh, main girl's love interest is not getting on the plane. Uh, he's just too busy shooting at all the guards, and the uh, dick boss guy is about to fly off without him. But then uh, he ends up getting in, but then uh, the guards end up shooting their plane down before it even takes off because I'm assuming they didn't have enough budget to actually have a, a scene where they're flying in the air. Uh, but the helicopter crashes in one of the many horribly edited scenes like I mentioned earlier. We couldn't use the helicopter for more than one day! We gotta leave! Oh god! Oh god, it's so bad! It's like one of those, um, one of those meme videos where it's like green screen explosions, like they put over like Call of Duty clips. That's a dick boss guy and main girl end up getting captured by Bernie. He then goes down his whole plan and says that he genetically altered his son Paul to become Hammerhead Man and that he needs the right girl to breed with him so that that way they can create this new master race of half shark half people. Established at the beginning of the movie, he tried having Paul genetically crossbreed with other women, but he thinks that since main girl once went out with Paul, maybe then uh, there will be some kind of connection there and that she'll be the, the true mother of, of this people. That was stupid. They kill off the dick boss guy and Bernie, like a complete dumbass, ends up getting killed off by his own son, you know, the, the, the hammerhead shark guy, ends up biting his arm off with even more shitty editing. And then he's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what did you think was gonna happen? It's a half man, half shark killing machine, you dumb bastard. Anyway, main girl's love interest shows up and kills the shark. I was expecting it that the, the shark would actually recognize her and turn on the dad uh, and kill him. I was right about that part, but I, I didn't expect it that, oh, he's just pure evil and he can't be stopped. And then ultimately, uh, yeah, Love Interest shows up, kills Shark Man. Uh, they have to pretty, they pretty much trash the laboratory because they're like, this is a disgrace to science and, you know, it can do horrible things to the, to the human race, so we gotta destroy this lab. Um, and then Bernie gets back up despite having his arm bitten off and he probably could have just bled out right then and there. But, uh, he tries to stop them, they just shoot him in the gut, and then he's down for the count for good. Uh, and then, of course, since it's a shitty made-for-TV movie and we already had a shitty effect with the helicopter, there's the thing where they're running away in slow motion and then big explosion behind them. Oh, oh yay, great. More awful explosion composite shots. Yeah. God, it looks so shit. And then I was expecting some kind of to-be-continued bullshit to happen, but no, they don't even do that. Just a couple shots of... Uh, the ocean, and then that's it. <laughs> no more of that. Overall, this movie sucks. It's a very crappy, straight-to-TV style, horribly edited shark movie with terrible effects and just terrible acting, all-around horrible shit. But with that said, I give it one point and that at least it wasn't as bad as Shark Exorcist. That is the one thing I give it credit for because that movie sucked so hard 
but and this movie was just kind of regular TV. This is like asylum level bad. And the only other thing I can complain about really is the fact that this thing on the cover, the Shark Man, it's barely in the movie. Like it's even shitty movies like Jack Frost and stuff like that, they even used the creatures on screen more than this shit did. Maybe it's because they were ashamed of how it looked, so they just kept shaking the camera a bunch and showing it from super far away, but seriously, yeah, fuck that. But yeah, it's a bad TV movie with asylum-grade effects and acting, but it's not the worst shark movie I've sat through. That still goes to Shark Exorcist. But oh, we got an entertainingly bad movie for next time because we get to talk about the Nicolas Cage movie, The Wicker Man. Uh, so yeah, we get to make up for this shitty movie really sucking, and now we get to look at a shitty movie that's actually really fun. So look forward to that next. Let's end this video with a, a clip of uh, Gargura because that's a shark-related thing. Actually, you know what? No, let's end this video with a clip from Hell of a Boss of Moxie getting crushed by a shark. <laughs> ah!